everyone. Uh, today this video is a little different. I'm just gonna do a little something called quick tips for singing, quick tips for singing, quick tips for singing, yeah. Most of my little jingles end with yeah because I don't write songs and I tend to need an extra syllable at the end. Okay, so um, the reason for this is because I got a new follower and also a new comment from Baron, uh, Baron Unlimited on my physiology of singing hypernasality versus mask resonance, aka put it in the mask, Louise, video. That's not, that's how I read it in my head. Put it in the mask, you know, like in Gypsy when she's like, sing out, Louise. Okay, anyway. Um, and he asks, <laughs> this comment was, um, relatively new voice teacher, about six years now. That's actually not that new. You have a lot of great experience six years. That's awesome. Uh, do you have any suggestions on how to help someone who sings nasal, or what I would probably call a hypernasal? Uh, the way I demo it in the video is apparently exactly the way the student sounds. So, I was going to type out a response, and then I realized I think this is going to be better done in a video. Um, <laughs> because I think demonstrations help a lot with this kind of thing. So, I have two fairly quick tips for how to deal with hypernasality. Um, one thing it really, I think, depends on in my experience as a voice teacher, it was often, I would find it most often in singers with belt, um, especially singers who came in like with a pop idol or something, and especially younger singers. <clears throat> Excuse me, kind of gucky. It's like super, super high allergy season right now, so I'm very <clears throat> right now. Apologize. Um, so, uh, so one of the tips for that with someone who has a belt and if it's not present in their speaking voice because I think that's that's really tip number two there are regions especially in America and I'm sure in other countries where a hyper nasality is present in just the dialect and just the way people talk and if that's the case that's more of a learned muscle memory that they're probably going to need to gain awareness for so I'm going to give you a second tip for that but this first tip one is just for the general this is typically what I saw a lot of times a young belter would come in, usually young, and um, they'd bring in a song to sing, and then they start singing it like this to me, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's kind of nasal, right? It kind of has that hypernasality. Um, but if you watch my mouth, if I do it, literally the only way I'm imitating the sound is I'm closing my mouth off, where I would normally be opening it. So, I'm going to sing it like this, yeah. Okay, like mouth closed. I'm even smiling, which is wider than a lot of times what these singers would do. Actually, especially teenagers, they tend to go, I'm gonna sing it like this, yeah. I'm gonna sing it all day like this, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and it's like, whoa, it's all coming out the nose. So, biggest tip for that, honestly, is having them open their mouth. It seems so basic. You're gonna feel like as a voice teacher, you're like, oh my God, like, this doesn't even feel like something should be pay someone should be paying me for this advice. But literally, open your mouth. <laughs> it makes a huge difference. Because then, instead of singing like this, you're singing like this, yeah. Oh, it kind of opens up all my sound, yeah, yeah. Ho, ho, right? Now, I definitely know where that spot is without that hypernasality, so it might not work quite so instantaneously for your students. But um, that is the biggest piece because here's the thing. If I try to sing with my mouth really, really closed and I'm trying to belt, if I plug my nose at some point, I won't be able to sing if it's actually going through my nose. Because what we tend to forget, especially as voice teachers, you tend to forget there is airflow. Air has to exit. You are exhaling and that is what's creating your sound, right? So <laughs> that's what's allowing you to phonate is your... <sighs> Your breath is coming out of your body. It needs somewhere to go. And there's two places it can exit. It either exits through your mouth or it exits through your nose or it does both at the same time. Which a lot of times when someone's a little hypernasal, it's really doing both at the same time, most of the time. But if you have a bulk of the air coming through the nose and you try to plug it, it's gonna get stuck. So if they're singing like It's like I'm basically starting to hum and I'm feeling really trapped and it's like, not very comfortable at all, okay? So open the mouth. The way that I do the tip for opening the mouth, 
the biggest way that I give it, which is like the biggest cue I give, is to open your mouth like you want someone to be able to read your lips. So this works particularly well with girls. For some reason, girls, and at least in my experience, and young teenagers and such, they tend to be the one who really know this is like a thing. So you're in a noisy place, you see your friend from across the way, and they're saying, and you, you know, they're looking around, like maybe they're holding a tray of food or something, and they're looking around for you, and you want to be like, we're over here, we've got you a seat right over here. That's how you want to be singing. That's the kind of opening in your mouth. Okay, and the reason I like that cue, opening your mouth like you're wanting someone to read your lips. I like that cue a lot because if you just say open your mouth, a couple of things will happen. Um, one of the biggest things that's the biggest issue, which I'm going to get into with my next post that I'm doing, hopefully right after this if I have time, um, <laughs> it's going to be um, if you're doing a vowel like an E, a vowel that needs more closure in the mouth, like if you go E, me, 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 I have to have it closed. If I go me, 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 as much as I try to make it an E, it's not going to be an E anymore. It's turning into like a me or a me or something, but it's not an E vowel, right? So when you say open your mouth like you want someone to read your lips, it tends to get a very natural um, opening on the vowels where they really do need to open their mouth. So on your ahs, your o's, maybe i, you can open up more there. Eh can definitely open up ah for sure, right? But the vowels like e and u, things that need a little more closure in the mouth, they don't struggle as much with trying to go hoo instead of hoo hoo right? Doing something like that, you do need a little more of that, like, real ooh, right? So, I love that. Open the mouth like you want people to be able to read your lips. And a lot of times, um, younger singers especially will feel very uh, self-conscious about it. Like, I feel like I look really awful. I feel like I'm going to catch a fly with my mouth. Okay? And then I usually say to them, if you think of your very favorite singers, think of your favorite, favorite gender matched singers <laughs> and nine times out of ten their favorite singer also opens their mouth a lot I'm like when you watch them sing on stage are they like this on their high notes are they like right nine times out of ten if you know you see the like publicity shot of them in action singing it's right they're opening their mouth more so then uh, I let them know like you feel like you're doing a lot because you're used to closing your mouth but you actually look like you're doing it the way the professionals do it. You look like, if I took a snapshot of you right now, you would look like a professional singer. That usually makes them feel a little better. And if they're not super uncomfortable with it, you could always prove it to them by taking a shot on your phone, like a little shot there, or even just recording closed mouth and then open mouth and see if they can judge the sound and what it sounds different like, which one they like better, you know, the, the kind of more hypernasal thing. I noticed especially, and this was in, you know, the years of voice teaching when, I think they've kind of backed off a little, but when Disney Channel had a lot of super auto-tuned voices on all their, like, you know, high school musical and a lot of the other type things, they, they had that sort of robotic sound quality to the voice. I noticed a lot of hypernasality in young singers around that time. I think because they were trying to imitate essentially that robotic sound. And so I had to explain to them, that's not how those singers sound. If you are in a room with them, that's not their natural voice. That's the voice after it's been processed and sent through filters and other various acoustic equipment. Uh, to, uh, to alter it a bit. So what's more important if you want to sing for a long time is to really learn what your natural sound is, how it's, what is the sound that's easy for you to produce, something you can do for a whole long set of auditions or a whole day of shooting or a whole day of recording. You want to be able to sing like that because usually with the younger singers when they were going for that robotic sound and they were being really hyper nasal trying to sound kind of that sort of auto-tune-y sound, over auto-tuned, I guess. It's really not always auto-tuned. It's sometimes it's a different filter or they like, yeah, it's kind of just washing out all the voices and making them sound kind of uniform. I think a lot of times is sort of what they're going for there. Um, 
And that's, uh, or at least that seems what they're, at least that's the net result. I don't know if that's their point, but it sounds like everybody sounds the same. Um, but that's the thing is that um, it, you know, that they needed to know that that was a manufactured sound and that that's not the kind of sound, if you're imitating that sound, you're not likely going to want to be able to do it or you're not, it's not going to feel good to do it for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. So I usually had to have a little talk with my younger students when they were imitating kind of the electronic sort of robotic sound. Um, now the second situation, if, the, if, if you're working with a singer who has hypernasality in their speaking voice because they're from an area where it's dialectically appropriate to talk, you know, like Fran Drescia, right? Like I can't really do it very well. I've never like lived in New York, so, you know, but Long Island, those sort of places where things can be kind of nasal, right? Or even on the, the West Coast, the don't you know, or not West Coast, sorry, <laughs> Midwest of America, like the don't you know, the Fargo's, okay? That kind of stuff can also be going through the nose. So you could have those sort of situations. And in that case, opening the mouth could work, but then they still have this muscle memory from their speech, which is the soft palate's a little lazy, it's a little low, and the air is going through the nose still. So in that case, I think it's good to try to build their awareness first so that it's something they can gain control over. Because until you're really aware that that's what's happening, it's really hard to break the pattern. So one of my tips for that would probably be to sing like an ah vowel, sing a vowel that shouldn't have any, any sort of air going through the nose normally, leave out the nasals, leave out the M's and N's because you can't do anything. If you plug your nose and try to sing an M, you can't do anything if it's really plugged. Stops the air, nothing comes out. I'm actually pushing against my nose. And that's the thing, you want them to sort of feel like, do you feel like there's a bit of air just kind of pushing against your nose? Or conversely, is the sound quality really dramatically changing if you record them, now that we have cell phones, it's so easy, you can record your student with the nose plugged and with the nose open, and if the sound quality changes a lot, you could explain to them that there's air coming out their nose. And so you want to try for the, you want to try for them to, uh, I can't talk right now. Uh, <laughs> what you want is a voice teacher is for them to try to be aware of when it's happening and to try to direct the air out the mouth instead of through the nose. So it can be the yawn space. It can, you can use a lot of imagery if you feel they need it, but sometimes for people, all they need is just that little prompt. So it can be, you plug it. So let's say they're, uh, Oh, like say it's kind of stuck in there and the sound quality is changing or maybe they'll be oh, eh. sorry I gotta get nasal if it's really bad it's like I start pushing against my nose and I feel like nothing can come out uh, so anyway, and you're going to try to say, okay, so that sound quality change or that feeling of air pushing against your fingers and your nose, wanting to really come out your nose, is because there's air going out your nose. So we want to try to, at least on ah, let's start there, and let's really try to get to direct it out. And if, if the nose holding plugging thing works, you can always have them do it while they do. So, uh, okay, I hear quality change. Can you try to like keep them singing and say, can you try to send it through your mouth? Right? So, uh, okay, okay. I see. Yeah, that totally changed. You know, and you might need to kind of prove it to them a little bit because they're, but that's how you start to build that awareness for that singer to, for them to be aware that, okay, so they have this pattern, it's probably from their speech. It's okay that they have the pattern in their daily speech. And honestly, it can be okay in certain contexts in theater if you're like a character actor more, you know, maybe. But you probably don't want that to be your voice, you might not want it anyway, to be your voice all the time. You might be, you might want to have the option to sing more like legit or whatever, right? So if that's the case, there is that. Uh, for hypernasality in classical singing, I feel like it's a little trickier, but you can try the nose thing. You can also try having them open their mouth more, um, but part of that is dealing with if it is a foreign language they're singing. But if we're talking vocalization level and it's just syllables, you try opening it, but I would say try to open vertically 
with a little like length but vertical. So ah 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 oh, oh, oh. like it would be I had a great voice teacher say it's like opening like you're gonna take a really big bite of an apple, like a really crisp or a bite of a giant hamburger. I've used that one before because you know, those are good. Uh, <laughs> You want to make yourself hungry. Um, so that I would go more for that. Whereas with belters, it can really stay, especially for American, um, and I know not everybody out there is in my country, um, but for American English speakers, uh, belting can be a little closer to their speech patterns, just with the more open mouth, and that tends to work. But for more classical sound, it's not quite the same as that neutral speech position, usually for most folks. So you can see if it works in that case. But there's also that piece of the pharyngeal lengthening and the tallness that they're gonna need to probably get into that sound when they open their mouth and drop it. It might help with that. But once again, as the voice teacher, you just have to monitor is this person, if they're doing classical and it's kind of ah, going through there, then you wanna say, okay, uh, let's try to open that mouth up. Relax your tongue. Oh, oh, oh. Now take a deeper breath. That was really good. Now take a deeper breath. Oh, and have them play with it. You know, it's totally fun. It's totally fair to just play around a little. If you open your mouth up a little more, if you don't open up as much, if you puck your lips, if you don't puck your lips, if you do different vowels, let's explore it a little and see how it feels when it's not going through the nose, or not stuck in the nose, as I said, obviously. Um, in the last video, we call that in the nose instead of through the nose, right? Um, so then it's just distinguishing when you have air flow, so you do have excess acoustic energy, like too much of the acoustic signature is going through the nasal passages. That's what creates that hypernasal sound. And there is air flow present when that happens. So that's the main thing. If you plug your nose, you're gonna hear a quality change, whether it's classical or belt, um, if there's enough air going through, because that's just sort of the physics of the system and how it works. So it's always a nice trick to get people aware of it, but sometimes just open the mouth. Like people need to be able to read your lips from the back row of the theater. Sometimes that works out great. And that has actually, that one tip has removed hypernasality within like one set lesson for so many teenage belters I've worked with. Just that one tip. Work on it for like five minutes and then the rest of the lesson is not oh, open up more. Oh, you're closing again. Open it up. I can't read your lips. Do it. And they do it and it's like pfft, night and day. It's kind of crazy. So, um, Yes, uh, that was my little tips for singing, little tips for singing. I don't remember the melody I did. Okay, anyways, back to physiology. I'm going to record something about vowels.